You know, some dirty, some dirty stinker stole my uh, car washing tool. It's basically like a, a pad on the end of an articulating stick. It's like, man, <laughs> some somebody stole it out of my backyard. Oh man, people really do suck. Uh, by the way, I've got uh, Fujifilm news for you. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. I've had confirmation from three sources one, two, three, that there is, sometime in the early part of 2021, a monochromatic GFX coming out. That's right. Three sources now. Two of them are great sources. I can't tell you who they are, but they're really great. Um, here's a fact. Back in photography school, and I, my, I've owned so many uh, film cameras was back in the early 90s. Um, so many uh, full-frame film cameras. Um, at photography school, the, the two that I used basically all the time was a Nikon F4S. I had a pair of them. And everybody had their own favorite uh, full-frame film camera. But it was undeniable then, as it is now, but there's a distinction now, that everybody in photography school, they very quickly as soon as they used, and film, uh, a film medium format was really cheap. I mean, you get a great twin lens uh, reflex. And I'm still used to looking down at a camera like that, which is why the GFX uh, 100 is so great, because uh, with the uh, articulating uh, tilt adapter, I could use it exactly like a twin lens reflex. Everybody, unless it was for uh, street or, uh, you know, something simple, everybody almost, like, 85-90% used medium format. And uh, medium format then was slow, just it is, as it is now. Um, we now have, of course, the world's first fast medium format camera, this being the GFX100. But we didn't care that it was slow, because the image output was... It would be kind of like having a, uh, a rich uncle, like rich Uncle Joe. And everybody hates him, but when he shows up, he gives everybody money, right? He's like, you hate him. <laughs> so nobody cared that it was slow. Medium format is just so much better. And by the way, when it comes to digital medium format today, there's not a single person on this earth. I don't care what they're a fan of. I absolutely don't care. There's not a single person that's used uh, medium format digital that it will ruin you. It will spoil you to the point where you'll look at every full-frame camera that you got and like, you know, the hell with that. Even though, of course, even with the GFX100 for ultra-hardcore sports action and, of course, the spectrum of lenses that are available, you know, you'd still use your full-frame sensor camera or your crop sensor camera because that's not what medium format is. Medium format is a giant earth mover. Yeah. More bigger, more better. But a giant earth mover... I don't know if you've ever seen them used at gold mines and whatnot. Um, each tire is like $80,000. Their top speed is usually like 15 or 20 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour top speed. That's when they're empty. Top speed, 20 miles an hour. And they get <laughs> like a quarter mile to the gallon of gas. <laughs> it's something ridiculous like that because the, the engine in them is about a half the size of my house. Or something very close to that. Not literally that big, but pretty damn big. Doesn't matter. Um, and I love making videos about topics that other people don't discuss. The average crop sensor camera, whether it be Fujifilm or anybody, like I'm using a Nikon D500 to shoot me right now. Here is the uh, Fujifilm X-T4, and here, of course, we have uh, the GFX100. By the way, the GFX100 here at the end of the month is going to get a big firmware update. Let me talk about that in a second. Average crop sensor camera, if you take all of them and throw them into a blender, is a 1500 plus, right? You know, X-T4 is more expensive because it has a lot more capabilities. Um, you know, there's cheap crop sensor uh, cameras that are great, like the, uh, the new uh, XS10, uh, or the uh, X-T30, but the average uh, lump sum of uh, crop sensor cameras is $1,600 or so. Average uh, now of uh, full-frame cameras, which have come down a lot 
is average about 25, 2600. So basically 1500 versus 2500. And only looking at Fujifilm medium format because Fujifilm now dominates over, this is not an exaggeration, over 90% of medium format uh, photography gear. Over 90%. That's basically overnight since Fujifilm decided to get into it. If you actually exclude the GFX100, which I guess I shouldn't exclude it, you know, the average is right around, well, actually, if you threw all three in the blender, the GFX 50R and 50S, and I have the 50R and GFX 100, 6,000 bucks. So 1,500, um, 2,500 for full frame, and uh, if you actually exclude the GFX 100, you're looking at uh, $4,800. Um, and by the way, the GFX 100 here at the end of November is going to have a firmware update, as if 102 megapixels of backside illuminated. Output isn't enough for product or anything that you want to do, and of course the world's first to fast medium format camera. The GFX 100 here in just a few weeks, less than a few weeks, gets the long coveted firmware update that lets you uh, do uh, uh, HDR photography where it, uh, it does uh, sub-micron movements on uh, the sensor with the IBIS mech, combines them into a file so you have 400 megabyte plus image. I guess it would be 400 and... Uh, I don't actually know how much above 400. I know it's above 400 megapixels. And the reason why Fujifilm actually waited so long to do this is that they have to have something to actually spike sales. Like when something starts waning a little bit, then you come out with a firmware update that basically makes it a, oh wow, my god, now the camera does this. And so any camera company would do that. And that's the reason why it has to be the major reason why Fujifilm waited so long for that uh, firmware update for the 400 megapixel uh, IBIS uh, mech movement. Uh, oh man, that's going to be amazing for my GFX and anybody else that has a GFX 100. But yeah, next year they are coming out with a, uh, a monochromatic uh, GFX camera, which I cannot wait to buy. I'm more excited about buying that than I was the long, long time it took me to get uh, and was able to buy my GFX 100. But here's another fact when it comes to full-frame sensor cameras, and it's really no different if you ignore the price, which a lot of people, of course, don't ignore the price, is that even though I'm buying, because I review cameras and lenses, and um, I have to buy the, uh, the Nikon uh, Z6 Mark II. Dual card slot, vertical grip capability, of course. People say, are you excited about the camera? And my answer is no, I'm absolutely not. I'm... I'm not excited at all. Um, same sensor as found in the original Nikon Z6. Um, and it's not any slant against Nikon, really, even though they took them too damn long. And of course, Nikon is suffering horrific financial difficulties and their stock is in the pooper, which uh, don't take my word for it. Go look for yourself. As a medium format camera owner, even back in the day of uh, film photography in, uh, in uh, photography school, if you had the best uh, full frame uh, film camera that money could buy, don't care whatever you think it was, it was just, it was unimpressive. It's kind of like, uh, you know, some, uh, I don't know, handsome guy goes to a, uh, I don't know, not that I would know, so I'm not handsome at all, you know, go to some place where like only, the most beautiful people in the world are you're dating those you, there's nothing out there in the regular world that's that's impressive um, as a, a medium format owner and lover include the GFX 100 GFX 50R and I got rid of the 50S just because I don't need that many medium format cameras there is nothing of the Nikon Z6 Mark II even though I'm gonna buy it that I'm looking forward to there is not People say, why doesn't Fujifilm uh, start making uh, full-frame sensor cameras? And nobody ever thinks before they ask that question. You see it so many times. And let's just hold up the two shining examples of what the hell Fujifilm does have. And no, this is not a Fujifilm commercial. I'm not endorsed by anybody. Tell me between these two, and yes, Nikon does have a bigger lens spectrum, of course. This is undeniable, but Fujifilm's coming out with a 300mm f4 and a 500mm f6 announcement for 2021. And there's really, other than that, there's nothing lacking in hardcore glass uh, for the x mount What between these two is lacking? Hardcore sports action, basically anything you want to do on the X-T4. And this, 
the 102 megapixel BSI IBIS world's first fast focusing medium format camera world's first and only still uh, fast focusing medium format camera which here in a couple three weeks is going to get a firmware update allowing it to do 400 plus megapixel images as if 102 isn't enough what between these two cameras is the serious question nobody talks about this in any of the photography videos what between these two cameras is lacking anything that you could think of this spectrum or this spectrum has got it covered um, I'm not hating on full-frame cameras but everybody keeps asking me well aren't you excited about getting the Nikon Z6 Mark II and the answer is no that I'm not I'm not because exactly back in the days of photography is the same thing you can have the best full-frame camera whatever it is a Leica uh, the Nikon F4S which I had a pair of it all just paled to a medium format whether it was 645 or Mamiya 67. I had a pair of 67 Pentaxes cameras, huge, noisy, um, obnoxiously big. You could uh, club things over the head with. <laughs> I had eight lenses for those two. Uh, six. The images. You would just sit there in the dark room, and I spent so many thousands of hours in the dark room. You look at the images, like, you know, medium format will just spoil the hell out of you. It's like living in a mansion and being waited on by the finest uh, five-star chefs. You can't go back to Burger King. And that's what full frame is. I don't care whose full frame it is. There's nothing exciting there that, you know, ooh, I can't wait. I, there, there isn't. And that's what people miss. And either end of the spectrum is covered. Uh, between the GFX cameras from Fujifilm and like the X-T4 or the on the cheap uh, side uh, the uh, the uh, XS10 that's coming out here in a week or so got a sharpie marker on my hand um, did some leather work earlier it calms me down it's actually a de-stress sort of thing I love doing leather work um, but it's it's no different now in digital than it was in film between uh, um, of course, I didn't have crop sensor. Oh, I kind of had crop sensor film back in the day, but um, we had a lot smaller than that, too. I'll never forget the 110 film. <laughs> I used to process that stuff for people. Oh, my God. Those little silly negatives. Like, oh, my God. Get a real camera. Um, that's also, too, now that full frame's gotten so cheap and crop sensor's cheap also, inexpensive, I mean. That Micro Four Thirds is. Why would you buy it? Micro Four Thirds is really no smaller than this is. It's not. The hair smaller. Yeah, but I mean, there's a reason. Because the, the glass from Olympus was great. And the cameras were really well made. I always loved Olympus. I've owned a lot of Olympus cameras, not digital, but back in the film day. There's just nothing there. You, this Micro Four Thirds. No, forget about it. Why would you do it? Why? In the days of, uh, of now, like the Nikon Z5, which I just got done reviewing, a perfectly valid camera, you know, for uh, the 1300 bucks for that camera, why the hell would you even think of having a uh, Micro Four Thirds camera? Um, so Fujifilm, actually, years ago, they saw all of this coming. And they made the right choice. And also, too, there's another reason for it, as I've said over and over again. Um, the battlefield of full-frame uh, fights between Sony and Nikon and Canon. And not really Panasonic, because they're not in the game. I don't even know a single person that owns a Panasonic full-frame camera. Horribly slow autofocus. And, uh... Sorry, I lost my... I'm always thinking about ten things at once. I'm sorry for losing my train of thought on that. But... Uh, yeah, and the, uh, must be getting old, right? <laughs> um, wh why would you, why would you do that? Why would, excuse me, uh, getting back on the Fujifilm, why would they, it would be a, a bloody, all-out uh, apocalypse with no profit to be had, and yet overnight, within a matter of less than two years, uh, Fujifilm literally owns, and they're the first camera company ever to do that, digital or film, 
to own a sector of uh, a photography, photography gear, that being me, a medium format. They're the first ones. Everything else is, and still is, obnoxiously expensive, obnoxiously slow. And uh, the GFX 100, I don't know if, I don't know if you, like a Mamiya Leaf Credo, I mean, you're talking about more than my car, my, my car was, I mean, sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000. For a camera that's slower than a constipated turtle. And that doesn't really matter on medium format because the GFX 50R is not super fast either. But I mean, it's a lot faster than any uh, Mamiya Leaf uh, was or the Pentax 645. Camera is really inexpensive. It's been like $3,500 on sale for nearly a year now. It's off of sale now, but what? Fujifilm made the right choice going with medium format and uh, crop sensor. I, it amazes me. I guess just people don't think. They don't have the wherewithal to think or understand. Um, Cost-benefit analysis. Why would you make a full-frame camera when there's an all-out apocalypse between Sony, Nikon, and Canon, you know, uh, doing each other in, trying to make a cheaper, cheaper, cheaper full-frame sensor camera? Just make crop sensor cameras X-series and make uh, medium format. Like I said, three weeks from now, this is a 400 megapixel camera. The images from it already, and everybody agrees when I uploaded the full RAW files, which, or a full TIFF, like a full uncompressed TIFF, which is about 650 megabytes. Oh my god, just mind-bendingly awesome. Uh, so Fujifilm made the right choice. And uh, Anyway, I, I, I know I uh, digressed a little bit in this video. For that, I apologize. Um, but I like talking about things that uh, the other the other photography channels don't talk about. They just they really don't have the intellect. They don't understand. It's important to see the big picture on things. People say, "Why is Fujifilm not making a full frame sensor camera?" Well, there's a whole lot of very valid reasons for that. It would be incredibly stupid for them to do that. But if you had an XT4 and a GFX100, what the hell is it that you couldn't do? There is only one thing that you could say that you couldn't do with either one of these cameras if you had all the lenses for both of them, which I basically do, is that uh, ultra hardcore, uh, uh, extreme long distance uh, Olympic stuff or uh, hardcore long distance uh, wildlife photography with fast lenses. But they are coming out with the 300 f4 and the 500 5.6, and they already have the 200 f2, which I already have. But that's the only niche. The only aspect between the medium format Fujifilm and the crop sensor Fujifilm, you know, you could do everything. And you could do more with these two cameras than you can with the spectrum of everything that Canon has. This is a really important point. All the spectrum of everything Canon has, and all the spectrum of everything Sony has, and all the spectrum of Nikon, you could do more with the Fujifilm crop sensor and medium format than you can with any of those larger companies. And they're not only larger, they're much, much larger. And that's an undeniable fact. So, that should answer your question on that. Anyway, I really wanted to discuss this topic because I get questions kind of on this all the time. I'm sorry if I talked too long. I humbly apologize for that. I'm totally at fault. Anyway, have a good weekend. Goodbye. I still want to find the person that stole my car washing. I really enjoy that thing. I had it for like two plus years and someone stole it. Hmm. Dirty snake. Hey.